And with me in the studio is an internationally acclaimed architect of Ghanaian ancestry, <sighs> Sir David Ajay, OBE. Welcome, Chief. Thank you. Good to have you here. It's very nice How to are be you here. doing? I'm very well. Very well. Oh. <laughs> How long have you been back? <laughs> oh, I've been back for a few years now. A couple okay. of years since 2018. I yeah. see. You put together the National Cathedral. We'll talk about the big one. Sure. You put together the design for the National Cathedral. Yes. One of your big words that yeah. you've done, I say. Mm. How did you feel about the onslaught and the rejection from a section of the Ghanaian people? I think it's, it's healthy that people are questioning, you know, why something is being done and what its purpose is for. Mm. And I never expect in any uh, proposal, <clears throat> for instance, when I did mm. the Smithsonian project, mm. Half the people said, why do you need this? What's okay. the importance of it? Mm. Why do we need to spend so much money on this thing? Okay. And then when it was finished, the queues are around the corner. Mm -hmm. All the naysayers are all standing in front of the building saying how proud they are. Okay. It had uplifted the sense of black culture in America mm -hmm. to have their stories said on the mall. So sometimes when you're going through the process, it seems very hard for people to understand mm -hmm. why it's important to do something. But you've got to have the conviction and the strength to know that the questions were asked and the right um, sort of analysis was made to make the proposition. Mm -hmm. And I think that the proposition for the cathedral is fundamentally important for Ghana. Mm -hmm. We're a nation where we have, there are over 300 church buildings of any sort here. Right. There's no central church mm. in Ghana. We have a Catholic church, we have every other denomination, right. and we don't have anywhere to celebrate our, our own stories, our national stories. Mm. For instance, when Kofi Annan was in, laid in state, mm. he was at conference center. Right. Is that the right way for a nation to celebrate such an important um, event? It should not be at a conference center. Mm. It should be at a cathedral, like any nation that has the dignity to do that. So it's, it is high time that that piece of infrastructure, which is so important to us as mm. Ghanaians, mm. the sacred is so important to us. We celebrate it more, more aggressively than most other nations. Mm. And it seems right that all the church leaders have come together to say that this is the building we should build to it in order to ensure that this is done in a dignified way, mm. but also that the building is something Something that uplifts the nation mm. is a symbol of hope. They say, well, mm. you should have considered a hospital and some suggested to the government to put together a multi-million dollar hospital. Well, instead. do you think that the government is not doing that at the moment? There are many know. hospitals being planned by the government. Okay. They're not necessarily stories that will grab your attention. Mm. Would you be talking about it if they said that we're building a multi-million dollar hospital? You would not be here. Mm. I would not be here talking. So I think that, yes, it's become a talking point and people have sort of become distracted. The government is very strategic from what I can see. Okay. And there are many projects happening, schools, hospitals, road building infrastructure, bus terminal interchange, but also at the same time there are monumental projects that need to be done. And I think this is one of the most important ones in mm. terms of monumental mm. projects. If you look at the monuments that we have around us, Nkrumah's mausoleum, the mosque or Freedom Arch, right. when were these done? A long time ago. <laughs> what is the symbol for the 21st century that we have mm. in Ghana? We don't have any. And what is the image of the future that mm. we want? And I think that this is what's being addressed by some do, of these Do we things. complain too much? I think complaint is fine. Okay. But I think that it's fine to complain, but I think that you've got to also analyze what is the root of this thing and okay. why it's being done. Because I think that you've elected very intelligent people mm. to be your leaders, and I think one has to give credit to what they're doing and allow them to deliver on their vision. And when they fail, then you can... The, the Ghana Institution of Engineers say, well, you're not even a member, so <laughs> who are you? Are you a Ghanaian architect or a British architect? I'm a, I'm a dual national. Okay. I, never get, I'm a, I, was, I was born Ghanaian, mm -hmm. so I, my first passport is Ghana. I okay. never gave it up. When I right. went abroad, a lot of people give up their passports to become other nationals. Right. I've never given up my passport. Mm -hmm. um, I became a British national because I lived in Britain for, for so long, so okay. I became a dual national. Okay. Both, countries, both countries allow this, so I was like, this is fine, okay. because you know, I was the guy who could have got a, a British passport, but would go to the, every embassy and go and wait to get my British, my mm -hmm. Ghanaian passport stamped and they'd say are you crazy why don't you just get a British passport I said no because I'm very proud of being Ghanaian um, 
it's uh, shocking to me that um, the you know the Ghanaian uh, associate of, of well, I don't know why the engi the engineers have really nothing to do with me in the sense the architects institute okay. the institute okay. of architects mm. are architects, my sorry. immediate body, right. and I'm a I'm a professional. I work in every jurisdiction around the world, um, and I always seek to work in the most proficient and, and, and professional way. Mm. I came to Ghana. The first thing we did was to speak to the GIS about okay. getting a license. Okay. We've been paying for the last two years, so I don't understand, you don't this understand is, why, they why this has even come up. It's a, it was my entire team were like, "What is going what on?" What could be the motive? Yes. What motive? Do what you is this, see? What is the underlying motive of this sort of spin of story? Why do you think somebody of my caliber would come into Ghana and not have a license? Mm. Am I suddenly not? Prof professional anymore after I have to work at the highest level everywhere in China, in the US, in the UK, in Germany. I work at the highest level everywhere. Mm -hmm. Why would I not bring that excellence to Ghana? That's actually what I'm interested in doing, is bringing that excellence mm -hmm. to Ghana. How long does it take you to put together an edifice like uh, the National Cathedral? I mean, the design. We'll talk about the, the big one that you're doing in Abu Dhabi shortly. Thank you. But how long does it take you to put something together? It takes, it takes several months. It's not a quick thing. It requires a lot of listening, mm -hmm. a lot of research. My work is not just about, you know, people think that architecture is, oh, a nice pattern. and It's actually a lot of research. We okay. look into history. We mm -hmm. look at the history of the topology. We look at the latest technology. Okay. We look at the aspiration of how we want to build now, mm -hmm. what we can bring, how the art, the art of architecture can create new opportunities of technology transfers okay. from mm -hmm. creating employment generating mm -hmm. opportunities. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at a whole gamut of things ex as well as the shape of the building and the mm -hmm. form and the, and the look. And that's why it takes time to put it together. Right. Let's talk about the big one. Yes. Because I'm particularly proud of this. Thank you. The so Abrahamic my... House. Yes. You won, you won it. Yes. I mean, the you big international the big, competition. Very big one. Yes. How many of you were in there? Well, I mean, I think about 100 or 20 odd people solicited um, uh, things, but they selected down to five mm -hmm. and gave us the brief to. Mm -hmm. So we were shortlisted down to the five. And then we were in competition with, uh, with these five okay. international teams, the best teams in the world. Mm. And this is a new building. Nobody's ever built a building like this in That's the world. That's what's on your screen right now. Right You're now. taking a uh, first time look at it, what <laughs> it will look like when it's finally done. Yeah. And you say it's going to be what, a mosque, a synagogue, it, and a church. It's basically the three temples of the Abrahamic faith. A okay. mosque, a synagogue, and a church. Okay. And they're connected by an Abrahamic museum mm. with a garden on the top. So uh, the three uh, faiths uh, can uh, come together, okay. worship separately, but then come together and debate and dialogue and be with each other. So they're wow. no longer seen as disparate groups, okay. but one family mm. coming from one father. Okay. The Abraham is the right, father Abraham. of all three mm. religions. Mm. And it's really amazing that the Pope, the head Imam, mm. and the head rabbi came together um, in this group called the Higher Fraternity. Mm -hmm. And they signed this document to say that these three faiths should no longer be enemies or see okay. themselves as enemies, mm -hmm. but understand that they are brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. I was so moved by this. How does it feel to be at the center of this story of trying to bring everybody together at one place? How does it feel? It's, it's for me, architecture works most, it's most powerful when it is a device to bring peace mm -hmm. and to bring understanding. And I couldn't be more proud and more humbled by the opportunity to work on such a project. Mm -hmm. You know, you can build skyscrapers and, and everything else. Those are fine and mm -hmm. every day, mm -hmm. but this is a once in a generation moment mm -hmm. to build something that really speaks to a new idea in the world. Okay. So I'm deeply honored that me, a Ghanaian, mm -hmm. could be chosen by the world's, uh, you know, the world fraternity. Mm -hmm. They chose a Ghanaian to build this building, the symbol of peace. And I'm very the, proud. The, the Brits are owning you because if I Google well. your name, it says <laughs> British architect. Yes. It doesn't mention Ghana. How, how do we? latch on to it I'm, as, this as a is country why I'm to, here. This to make to make some you know waves as well i think we should learn from the british they mm. understand what soft power is okay. and ghanians need to own i have never said i'm not ghanian in every press release it's ghanian british okay. i actually put ghanian first, first. because it is first mm. but the british flip it round okay. uh, <laughs> <laughs> quite rightly because they want to claim it but i'm, right. I'm really for me i hope that my, my story and what I'm doing is inspirational for young Ghanaians. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I'm very interested that Ghanaians also realize that we're really well known for fashion, mm -hmm. for music. Mm -hmm. I also want Ghana to be known for design because right. I think some of the great uh, you know, designers of the world could come from this region. And I think it's mm -hmm. about having access to the kinds of things that will have world class standards, mm. but also to bring the education and the knowledge here. And, mm. you know, for me in my work, I've worked for the last 20 years in the West and okay. I've done very significant things. Absolutely. But I want to now 
bring my expertise to Ghana and I want that to be something that is shared mm -hmm. with Ghanaians so that we can actually um, use that as a template to rise. I'm is very interested opinion, in that. Is it your opinion that you've been celebrated well enough in your country, your home country, Ghana? I don't think my country knows me yet and, okay. and I, I understand that they don't know what I've done yet. Um, but I hope that they will see soon what I'm capable of doing. You've been solving the problems around the world. In Ghana, we have a perennial problem of flooding. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> have you thought about it? What do you propose? Yes, if you had a chance yes, to? yes, yes. I mean, flooding is... It's actually not a difficult thing to solve. It's to do with water tables. It's to do with, you know, stormwater management. It's actually to do with master planning. Mm -hmm. I think that the problem of Accra is that the the city has grown iteratively. What okay. I mean by that, it's grown bit by bit, okay. and by ed all individuals doing their own little bit, okay. and not as a big vision. Mm -hmm. And you need the big vision. The city is like an organism. Okay. It's uh, you need to have all the parts working together mm -hmm. for it to work. And right now, people build their own little bit they don't build the, the stormwater connection or people throw things dump things into the stormwater mm. lines mm. and then it blocks up the roads we have to be model citizens and care about the infrastructure okay. that we all share mm. but also then the the local authorities need to make sure that this infrastructure is kept well and is maintained but it's a two-way street well, that, it's not just mean, them and it's not that, just that, us. that would mean that people will lose their homes uh, some, some some areas need where to go down. yes i think that's where people have built where water lines are mm. i mean i i understand the responsibility of, and, the, and the desire to have homes but if you build on a water line which supports an entire community mm. upstream mm. it is not fair and you should actually clear your way to allow the communities mm. to to um, have proper sanitation and proper drainage. Okay. And you should build in areas where there is not going to be that issue. Mm. And um, I think that that's the problem when people build um, sort of shanty, sort of build ad hoc. Mm. And I understand their desire to do that. Mm. But if you don't plan the city, you get these problems. Flooding occurs, then we get disease, mm. and we get all these problems, which actually then also destroys the roads. Okay. Water goes underneath the tarmac, it makes potholes. Mm. All these problems occur right. if we don't have a kind of joined up, sustainable, mm. you know, mass a planned city and I think that that's what we're trying to do with all the work that we're now doing in Ghana. Where do we begin? Where do we be begin mm. with actually making smart cities, empowering um, our, our cities to be smart in the sense of understanding infrastructure to the built environment is one thing, okay. planning that, mm. making sure we stick to the plans mm. and we build what we say mm. and making sure that the developers and all the people coming together follow the rule of the law okay. in these things and then to make sure that we have maintenance of these infrastructures. Right. Then it will work well. I mean, for instance, what we're trying to do on Marine Drive mm -hmm. is to master plan a new public infrastructure, a new smart city mm -hmm. that will reinforce the original downtown of Ghana, mm -hmm. but really turn it into a 21st century model, the likes of which you can see in Singapore, Shanghai, right. New York. Really, mm -hmm. we're trying to build that level of building okay. in our downtown Accra. So you, you, I'm sure you've been driven around Accra and other parts Very of much. the country. Mm -hmm. Do you see that 21st century uh, inclusion in the present designs that are, no. are coming up? You no. don't see that? No, uh, sadly I find that um, the city is still looking at models that are, for me, 20, 30 years out of date. Really? Yes, yes. I think that we've become more concerned about the look of the building mm -hmm. than what the building does. And what okay. I mean by that is that when you build a new building, are you looking at the environment around it? Okay. Are you contributing to the improvement of the immediate adjacencies? Mm -hmm. Are you making sure that it's sustainably built? Are you dealing with the communities that are being displaced? Okay. These are very important things when you make a building beyond just making a shiny new building, mm -hmm. which people have understood now in making cities all around the world, not just in the West, in mm -hmm. Asia, everywhere. Mm -hmm. So I think that we need to look at that. For me, when I look at a new building, I'm trying to see what else it's done, not just does it look So the high-rise buildings we have around which we're wowed by, really, are 20, 30 years back in line? I, I think that in, in terms of planning, mm. um, they're not up to speed in terms okay. of what you can do when you build high-rise and okay. the benefits it gives back. Okay. I think that the ground planes are still poor quality. If you look mm. at the pavement areas, the planting, if you look at these new places that we're making, yes, we're making great buildings, mm. but the ground plane where ordinary citizens are, mm. I think is still poor. And we need to kind of make sure that we're building great buildings, but also creating great environments for ordinary citizens. Okay. That's how we don't make an us and them. Mm. Oh, that's where the rich people are and the poor people okay. have nonsense. Mm. It is, for me, unacceptable 
level okay. that we build and we don't improve the public realm of our cities. It's, it's something that I really want to bring to the mm. building culture of our city, that you don't just build a wall and a fence, okay. but you improve the immediate environment mm. from mm. the benefit of what you're doing, mm. and that you actually co-own and look after this. Right. And if we all do that, the city would improve dramatically. Mm. We don't just look after our little bit, but we look after the extension of that okay. and look after How our neighbor. People. How do we look after our neighbor? Mm. That's very important. So, so for example, the National Cathedral design, mm -hmm. does it have a solar infrastructure in there? Yes, this is going to be the most sustainable building in Ghana, hands down. Mm. It's going, we're aiming for gold leads, which is one of the highest standards. Okay. It'll use um, ground, we use geothermal okay. kind of energy. We're also making a public park. We mm. didn't want to just build a building. A lot of people say, why don't you just put a building there? Okay. We said, no, we want to build a public infrastructure so that people can enjoy it. Okay. That is part of the sustainability of the project mm. that we create for, for the first time in a long time, mm. a new national park that anyone can go to right. as a citizen and just be proud of what we are doing as Ghanaians. That's your camera. 30 seconds for you. There's a young architect out there. Wonderful. What do you say to them? Dream about what your city should be. Um, follow your dreams. Become an architect. Um, come and work for me. Come and work for all the other architects. And let's train you to become the future of this country. Okay. I'd like to work with you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Such Sir a pleasure David to speak to you. Ajay is OBE. He's also a very proud Ghanaian and he doesn't stop saying that.